and he's talking about vitawakalia ngumu Mm. My friend, you cannot even kalia in this modern day and age. You can forget about kutukalia sisi. Yeah. You can not kalia your your spouse mm. or your children. So you prefer surrounding yourselves yourself mm. with people who will keep on praising you, praise and worship team, and people who will uh, most likely lick your toes and other places that I don't want to mention. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, you know you're a, yeah. a, a psychophantic type yeah. of uh, arrangement. Yeah. Those are the people you're comfortable being around. Will we have constituted uh, an, an IBC within that period? Mm. We'll be mourning. I'm not saying that anything is going to happen. Yes, <laughs> you know. You just so, saw the record. You know, <laughs> let, let the guys, <laughs> let the guys, let the guys be easy. Yeah, you know? I'm not saying, but I'm saying it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because they're just human beings. It's possible. Anything can happen. Yeah. Maybe some of them are sick. What gives him the idea that he can do as he wishes? This is not his personal house. This is not for going. Mm -hmm. I think the president needs to stop being simplistic. Is there a vacuum post Raila? Play one clip where Ruto has spoken truthfully. A very good day to you. Welcome to Philip Kissier Unscripted right here on Harman Minyora's YouTube channel. My name is Jadil Kabira for political conversations that we hope will shape our political leaders, help them in making better policy decisions and informed political moves. These conversations come to you truthfully from Philip Kissier who says it as he sees it. A spade is a spade yesterday saying that the president has a big L. Many people have asked me to, for him to expound on that. I hope he will. We'll also talk about the replacement or the removal of CJ Martha Kome. A petition has been filed replacing commissioners also from the IEBC. High Court surprised Kenyans yesterday telling the commissioners, the selection panel to go ahead and to place the commissioners that resigned and retired. We'll also talk about doublespeak. President William Bruto was in the Italy-Africa summit. He also said before that we'll not attend such summits, saying one leader cannot summon Africans. They'll send AU to represent them. But AU was there, and he was also there. Philip Kisia, how are you doing? It's a nice Friday. Thanks for making time for us. How's this day for you? Well, uh, always my pleasure, uh, Jadel, mm. um, to spend some time with you and your team. Yeah. So I'm um, happy to be here. It's a good Friday. Mm. Uh, and I hope uh, you'll enjoy the rest of the weekend. Yes, I, we, we hope to for Kenyans. But you, you, yesterday, something surprising after our show, received so many messages. People are telling me, hey, Buanam Kubwa syndrome, what is Kisia saying? Big L on the president's head. What is this diagnosis that you've given the president that people don't seem to understand this Buanam Kubwa syndrome? It is there, particularly in Africa, mm. and it is worse in Kenya. And, uh, you know, this um, uh, uh, philosophy mm. um, was or is, or I got it from my professor uh, when I was training in leadership at Harvard, mm. uh, Professor Marty Linsky. Mm. So Pro Professor Marty Linsky ex was trying to explain, you know, initially, I used to believe that uh, we have somebody called a leader. Mm. But I think after a few weeks with uh, Professor Marty Linsky, mm. he persuaded me that there's nothing like a leader, mm. but there's something called leadership. Because leadership is an activity and all of us as human beings have the capability, have the capacity mm. to exercise leadership at any point given in time. And I'll give you a basic example. You have a team here. You're the host of the program. I'm sure you're not the one behind the cameras. I'm sure you're not the one who cleaned this uh, studio. Yeah. I am sure you're not the one who prepared this cup of uh, uh, beverage. Yeah. So... If you are to be a leader, then we would have expected you to carry out all those activities. Hmm. And therefore, in uh, Professor Marty's argument, leadership is just an activity. And any human being can exercise leadership at a given point in time. So all those people who have participated hmm. in making sure that uh, you run this program have exercised leadership at a certain point in time. Okay. okay? Yeah. The one who made tea. 
It's a leader exercise that's leadership at that point in time. You are not there. Yeah. But the T is here. Okay. So, and then, of course, um, the big L comes from the people who believe that they are leaders. Mm. Yeah. The Bona Mukuba syndrome. Okay. And that is what we seem to be suffering from here. Mm. I know everything. Mm. You know, that there is no other human being who can tell me what should be done. I have the solutions to everything. Mm. I can therefore make the tea. I can therefore be the host. Mm. I can therefore be the man behind the camera. Mm. I can even clean this place because you are suffering from what Marty Linsky calls the big L syndrome, the Buona Mukuba syndrome. And then, of course, it reminds... And then, there are, you know, there are risks mm. when you have that L, big L on your forehead. Yeah. And it's normally on your forehead. People can see it. You people can see it. Uh. They can feel it. The, the risks that are associated with uh, that syndrome mm. is that you start believing you are a demigod. You are some, like some small little god somewhere. You want people to worship you. Mm. You want people to follow you. Yet you have no vision. You are visionless. You are rudderless. Then the other risk, risk mm. is that uh, such a person yeah. will always escape from the truth. Yeah. You don't want to be told the truth. So you prefer surrounding yourselves, yourself mm. with people who will keep on praising you, praise and worship team, and the people who will uh, most likely lick your toes and other places that I don't want to mention. <laughs> okay? So, uh, you know, you're a, yeah. a, a psychophantic type yeah. of uh, arrangement. Yeah. Those are the people you're comfortable being around. All right? So, um, it is very dangerous yeah. uh, to have somebody um, uh, who is a president who, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, suffers from the big L syndrome. Now, let me... When, when I see... What is happening in our beloved country? It reminds me of my grandfather, and may the Almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace. Mm. Hazalwa Mwala. Mm. Hazalwa Mwala, and you know, I mean, if you are still alive, you'd have been maybe 150 years. Mm. So, in those years where man was everything, you know, and uh, you know, and a bit of quick here, mm. Hazalwa. If he was had in the market that uh, your daughter-in-law and your grandchildren have arrived in the homestead, he will come singing war cries and war songs mm. from the market, from where he was drinking busa, yeah. eh? intoxicated with the busa. Eh? Mm. But he was not singing, he, you know, war, war songs, and even issuing threats to my grandmother mm. that hey, Estera, Estera was Stella, Estera. Mm. If you have not taken care of my, uh, my, my daughter-in-law mm. and children, just start packing off and, and, and go back to where you came from. Mm. Those are threats. Mm. It cannot, you cannot run even your family, at, you know, even at family level, mm. you cannot apply threats. That, you know, it's old-fashioned. Mm. It is something that uh, is a keg. Uh, you know, it's backward. In fact, we have no words to describe such a, a type of leadership because mm. we are living in a modern world where uh, democratic principles are supposed to be espoused, okay? Mm -hmm. That as a leader, you are supposed to communicate, just communicate effectively, efficiently, mm -hmm. and people will buy into your, um, uh, you, you know, your, 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 your argument. So, um, and sometimes I excuse my very good friend and my president. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel sorry for him because he's living in the 20s, 1920s, eh? mm. uh, the, you know, the, uh, the Hazalo area, yeah. uh, era, mm? uh, where you are here in this day and age, a president sitting on a rooftop mm. of a, a public vehicle because the vehicles he's riding in our vehicles are not his. Yeah. He's on the rooftop and he's talking about Nitawakali Ngumu. Mm. My friend, you cannot even kalia in this modern day and age. You can forget about to kalia sisi. Yeah. You cannot kalia your your spouse mm. or your children. But if in case you kalia them, mm. please, for heaven's sake, we just want to politely remind you yeah. that you cannot kalia us. <laughs> sisi no kalia. We're just getting into this conversation. But yesterday he was in Bungoma. He uh, he gave. Uh, some school there, three million shillings out of his own pocket. He said, uh, I want to give you three million so that you can buy an acre of land. He said, this is not from the government. 
this is for me is this working well for him will it work for, well for him when it comes to dealing with the public perception before you even get into this conversation you see um i mean he's a generous man mm. and nobody stops him no, nothing stops him from being generous mm. and dishing out money the way more used to dish out money mm. we don't even want to question the source of that money because if it's money that you've earned legitimately mm. Three mil how do you just give three million shillings from your and how many schools can he support with three million shillings? There are thousands of schools that need money. In fact, the other day I saw in the newspapers yeah. the school where he went to, uh, now uh, Safaricom is intervening. Yeah. The school he went to, mm. he has been an MP, he has been a, a minister, he has been a deputy president, now he's a president. Those are almost uh, three and a half decades. Mm. And I looked at the school, primary school where he went to. 35 years later, it takes Safaricom to intervene, to upgrade it. So, my, you know, I think it doesn't make sense. Uh, and probably was doing it for, for you people in the media cameras yeah. and to police people in the village. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, as a man who comes from that area, uh, we have accepted his gift yeah. with all our arms. And <laughs> <laughs> we hope he can come every day. And, and we, we, we have more schools that need such money. <laughs> all right. Now, we want to know, he was in Italy before he went to Bungoma. And he said this uh, a, a while back in April last year. He said, it wasn't intelligent for 55 African leaders to go and sit before one gentleman from another place. Emphasizing, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. He said they will... They will have the African Union represent them when it comes to talking with these European leaders, American leaders. And this time around when he went to Italy, he was just next to Azali Asumani, who is the AU chair, and the AU commissioner, Boris Musafaki. Is this doublespeak, or what would you call this? Or was Italy, or did he have to go to Italy this time around? You know, sometimes I, I empathize with my president. Because he wants to act tough. You know, in a space where people don't even, people don't even recognize him. Mm. And we know that um, Africa, and this is a fact, Africa does not play in the Premier League. <laughs> we are in Division 1 or 2. <laughs> not even Division 1. Eh? <laughs> we are not. We are not, we are not yeah. and, and when you are in Division mm. 1, I don't know, 2, mm. there is no way yeah. you can play in the Premier League. In fact, you can only be a, a spectator. You can just be called to watch the mm. match. So when you are called, your ticket is paid for. You just, you know, you are summoned. Mm. Now, you know, it, it, it makes no sense for playing tough mm. or acting tough. When you're just a beggar, mm. <laughs> all those missions they go to yeah. is for begging. These African leaders, they, you know, and, and, and you know those Mzungus are fully aware that most of the African leaders are corrupt, yeah. are incompetent. Mm. You know, they know. Some of them have done crazy stuff. And that's why most of these African leaders end up in ICC. Mm. Uh, genocide, murder, you know, I mean, the African leaders do crazy stuff. Mm. So they don't expect, you cannot be respected. Mm. And nobody will respect you, Jidel, so long as you are a beggar. You are going with a big bakuli, a bowl, to keep on, you, you're just begging, okay? Mm. You, all these missions are begging missions. You come and say, now, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, now our credit rating is very high, mm. now I've borrowed money, borrowed. Who are you borrowing from? You are borrowing from a master. Mm. And the master tells you what to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's one who was holding the... Uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the wallet. Yes. He will tell you, my friend, stand, you stand, sit, you sit. So it was pointless even for him to start, uh, you know, talking tough, hmm. knowing very well that uh, Kenya is just uh, most of the time on a, a, a begging mission. What? Um, uh, we, we, and we are full of incompetent fellows. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, really, I, uh, I saw him going to Italy. Hmm. It's not even a few, a few months ago he was talking tough. Mm. And then he's in Italy shaking hands with the prime minister. What, what, what do you think uh, uh, you know, could have changed? Did he have, you know, he's the one who made the statement. It's not me who I'm made the statement. What could have he said, yeah. my president said that going forward, mm. and I'm quoting, going forward, we are not going to be summoned by one character mm. as African leaders, which will be sending one or two people, you know, mm. <laughs> to represent us. 
the man who makes the statement is the one who takes a whole airplane and, 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 goes, <laughs> and goes to Italy. I'm saying, no, not even the US, yeah. not even Russia, not even China, yeah. Italy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, Italy. it's a joke, man. It's, yeah? it's ridiculous. But he, he I mean, missed the Russia one for this case, and then he goes to Italy. What might have influenced the sudden change? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I really, Jadel, <laughs> I can suspect he was, maybe he went to look for jobs for people, yeah. for the youth. Yeah. And you see, I mean, instead of creating jobs here, mm. you know, so that we have industries, mm. you know, manufacturing and what have you, sustainable things, you are looking for jobs in Europe I'm, I'm, for our people to go and clean, and yeah. clean toilets yeah. in Europe. Are those are the of, sort of jobs we are looking for. Jadel, <laughs> can we be serious for once? For heaven's sake, can we be serious? <laughs> you, and, and even the jobs that you keep on announcing. Yeah. Now I've got jobs from Google. I've got, I went, I don't know, here, uh, Saudi Arabia. I've got these jobs. I got, came back with 100. Where are these jobs? Where are they? Mm. Can we get a report? Because when a president is spending public funds, eh, under the disguise of looking for opportunities for Kenya, mm. he comes here and makes a mere statement. You know, if you're in private sector, mm. you are not just allowed to make mere statements. Mm. You say, this is what I've done, okay? This is the evidence. And you track. Now, these statements we keep on making, I've created a million jobs. Then the following day, the blue chip company is led by Google saying, we have... You know, you have offloaded people. Yeah. I mean, what is so special about these uh, 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 Kenyan people that, you know, uh, that the same companies you are, uh, you're purporting to have uh, given some jobs are laying off people 48 hours later? Mm. I mean, you know, we are in an era where you cannot lie. Lies cannot be sustained. Ndengwenjiru was saying that our government has become like an, 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 uh, these agencies that take people abroad, these river road agencies. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I can tell you, I agree 101% with my friend, Wakili. Because, you know, Kibaki, Emeritus, my president, mm. almost um, a decade and a half ago, he said, listen, we want you people who are in uh, Europe cleaning toilets yeah, and cleaning streets to come back here and help us build this country. We want to set up manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We want to create industries. We want to create ISD hubs. There are job opportunities we can create here, mm -hmm. back home. Please come back and help us. Uh, we have a president who is telling us mm -hmm. almost uh, a, a decade and a half later mm -hmm. that I want to get you jobs uh, to go and... Uh, <laughs> and clean washrooms in, in, in Europe mm -hmm. and be housemaids in Saudi Arabia. It's ridiculous. How, how does this instance of double speak? you say you are not going to bow before one man, you go to that one man with what you call a bakuli, how does it affect his credibility both here domestically and internationally? And, uh, nobody takes it for, uh, uh, seriously, nobody. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I mean Jadel, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, these uh, Muzungus, mm. uh, they are more serious than we are. So when you know, they look at you, they look at what you're saying, you're not consistent. Mm. They know you say one thing, you mean the other thing. Mm. They will never take you seriously. Worse off, mm. back home, people just see you as a liar. You know, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, you cannot keep on lying. Mm. Bec uh, unfortunately, nowadays, people on this uh, internet thing, yeah. even small little children, they just Google and they see the lies we've said. Now, when you, they lose confidence with you, mm. even at that very uh, uh, tender age, mm. who will you govern? My worry even is not... My word is not even the lies that he says. Yeah. Many lies. A bank of lies. Mm. That's not my worry. My worry is what values are we in engraving in our children? Mm. Values of lies that we cannot afford to be truthful, mm. that we cannot afford just to be transparent, mm. that we cannot just communicate openly and transparently. Mm. 
-hmm. That the only thing we know is saying a lie after a lie. I, you know, I feel sorry for the generation that is behind us. In fact, this generation of ours has completely let down. Hmm. Completely let down the generations that will come. Oh. Mike Ibaki's generation repaired what had been done. Hmm. You know, they handed over to us. Now, instead of picking from where they left, we picked up and we started going down. Hmm. Okay? So it's most unfortunate. And the people who are, are taking us down are people who we thought hmm. would do better than the generation that uh, handed over to us. It's, hmm. it's, it's most unfortunate. So there's a lot of, job, uh, of jobs, or a lot of work to be done by the next generation. Uh, if they find a country. And that's why I keep on saying Jadel. They have a responsibility not to wait for even 2027. Hmm. They have a responsibility of telling those in power right now, get out. Hmm. Get out. We've given you too much time. We've given you too much air time. Hmm. You get out or we shall force you out of office. It has happened elsewhere. Hmm. Dictators have been removed from the office. And they are removed by the generation. Okay. The, the, the generation that can see the country being messed up are the ones who come up and remove you from office by force. So let them not wait. Yeah. Ah, no, they should not wait. Because if they wait, they'll find no country. <laughs> they'll find no you country. know, the country, the coffers will have nothing. Uh, yeah. Gosh, it's not just, you know, I mean, we are told a, the country, are already a, country, a country that uh, is in debt to a tune of uh, only 11 trillion, something yes. like that. I mean, it's, 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 I mean look, how, how can this happen? With all these resources that we have, mm. we are so blessed. We can't even produce anything because of poor and bad leadership. Mm. Even just producing toothpicks. I thought by now, by now he has been in office for a year and a half. Mm. If he, indeed he was a serious man and he wanted to create jobs, mm. by now we should be producing our own toothpicks, mm. toothpaste, mm. A shoe polish. Yeah. We should not be importing these things. You know, uh, tissue paper. These things are still being imported. Soap, mm. still being imported. Those are things within a year and a half, he should have said, not anymore. But there is industrial area for not, soaps. Not, not anymore. We have soaps in Kenya, Kisia soap. Go and check how much we are anyway, importing yeah. on detergents. Just go and check. Mm. Toothpicks, go and check. Just go and check. In fact, Google. Mm. If you, he was a serious man, eh. he should have started with, you know, low-hanging fruits. Quickly say, you know what? In one and a half years, no more toothpicks. Mm. Toothpicks. But they will not stop them because they are the ones who are importing. <laughs> let's talk about 2027 for a while. You've said we lo let's not wait for 2027. But High Court has directed IEBC to, uh, to has directed the selection panel to go ahead and replace commissioners uh, immediately. This commissioner has resigned, others uh, re retired, and we're working as a nation without commissioners in the IEBC. We cannot have by elections, we cannot uh, look at constituency boundaries. Uh, so this is what the High Court has directed, despite the National Dialogue Committee, which agreed that we first deal with the selection panel, so that Azimio can be contented that the commissioners that are put in place are commissioners that are balanced and are fair. You look at this ruling from High Court, what comes to mind? Jadel, I think we are facing a constitutional crisis mm -hmm. that has been created by those in political space. And I talk about both sides. Mm -hmm. If you look at the history of uh, our electoral bodies, it's a bad history. The only election that I can rem remember that was free, fair, transparent, and accountable mm -hmm. was 2002. Nobody complained. Yeah. Even Uhuru Muigai said, you know what? Let me go back to Ishaweria. Mm. <laughs> Kibaki has, you know, yes, you know, you know Kibaki has defeated me, yeah. fair and square. That is the only time. Okay? So whoever, I think we should learn, draw experiences from that team that was able, without the technology that we have right now, to, to be able to, uh, you know, to, to roll out um, uh, an election process that uh, 
you know, the people, everybody appreciated. Mm. But subsequent to that, and some before that, I mean, it's all chaos. Mm. Why? Because they have vested interests. People want electoral bodies that don't work. People, and unfortunately, this one, I think both sides must take, uh, take responsibility mm. because you saw the electoral body led by Chabukati. With all fairness, mm -hmm. those people were totally incompetent. <laughs> Starting from the... They're incompetent. Uh, the co the whole all commission. of them. The whole commission. Uh, I mean, couldn't we have got better caliber people mm. to, uh, to occupy that office? Even if you wanted your grandmother mm. to be the one on the commission, can you know just get somebody who is competent and qualified? You're saying that the Cherera for so, you look at Chebukati, I none mean, of them. It's, uh, it, I mean, I, I don't know about you, mm. that's my personal opinion, but okay. I can tell you mm. from where I sit, from a management perspective, mm. that was the most incompetent team that we have ever had, and it starts with the leadership. Mm. So maybe it was designed. But those who gave them that opportunity, they knew that, you know, you, uh, when somebody is, uh, you know, um, uh, has a shortfall in many ways, you can manage. Mm. But when somebody is independent, somebody is competent, they will tell you, hey, man, let me do my job. Mm. Okay? So we start from there. Then the systems that um, 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 are procured. You have fellows who, we, I buy something from you, I pay you billions of shillings, and then you tell me, oh, you cannot open up this, this thing. Mm -hmm. But I bought it. Yeah. So those are some of the things that um, uh, the institution, institutions concerned mm -hmm. must, you know, look into deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Why you buy a system and then you are told, no, uh, half of it is yours, half is not yours? All that is nonsense. You, I buy, if I buy a motor vehicle or an aircraft, I tell you, I cannot call it for maintenance. Yes. Why should you keep on holding my tail? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, th that is one. Then the other thing is, um, um, uh, of course, if you look at the court ruling, the courts um, have been very clear mm -hmm. that uh, even this dialogue team, what you know, the, and the, our courts are normally very diplomatic in the way they mm -hmm. communicate. Most of the times, mm -hmm. they're, they're quite diplomatic. They just, they, they just said that this dialogue te team was not grounded on law. Yeah. It was just a, 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 some good friends who have some common interests yeah. sitting somewhere having tea every day and a mandazi. They're saying political expedience. Yeah, political expedience. And law cannot operate that way. The constitution cannot just be expedient hmm. to a few characters. Okay. That uh, you want to change things to fit your requirements. Hmm. The constitution is a document. Yeah that uh, uh, you cannot change at your own will mm. because it doesn't belong to you it belongs to the people of kenya okay. so you can't just sit down a few people in a room somewhere and say okay this one is not right for us change it no so i agree with the cost to that extent mm. that you cannot um uh, you cannot use it for political expedience you cannot suspend the constitution mm. you know so that you can sneak in a few things at will. Uh, well, let me okay. just hold you on that now, Diogo, because uh, yeah. before you forget, before I forget too, yeah, yeah. There, there are people that come and claim the spirit of the constitution that goes beyond the constitution in itself. And they come and have this dialogue and they have this... Which spirit? Say that, <laughs> well, that spirit is coming from... And, from, and that was the that, argument when it came to BBI. That spirit is coming from hell. <laughs> the only spirit we know is the constitution, the document. As it is. As it is, we make reference to that one. Okay. And you see, I don't know why this team met, you know, they, because they're saying, uh, you know, it's, it's only a motion of parliament and what else. It was a motion of parliament yeah. and a gazettement. Yes. Okay. Why was it not anchored properly in law mm. yeah? through an act of parliament so that you insulate the, mm. the, the entire thing? Yeah? But they were very fast. Mm. Either the, both parties knew what they were doing by buying time and wasting our time. Because why do things incorrectly all the time? Surely. Wasting public funds. Okay. So, in fact, I think those people who are behind this thing, mm. and because uh, uh, His Excellency William Ruto also was a signal to this thing, mm. it must be held to account. All of them? Yeah, they must be held to account.
you had your number three. I don't know if I, if I made you forgot it. When it comes to what the High Court ruling means. So, you see, um, I think what, what, what it basically means is that um, uh, follow the Constitution, proceed as the Constitution directs you to do. Mm. My only fear here, my only fear is that uh, Ruto, in the current arrangement, will have an upper hand. Mm. We may have another Chabukati team to oversee the elections of 2027. That must be avoided at whatever cost. Mm. We must stop it. Because I can tell you, and I mean, I pray that all of us will be there in 2027. If anybody makes a mistake of repeating what happened in 2022, there'll be bloodshed in this country. Mm. I don't want to predict, but I have a fear that any attempt to interfere with the electoral process in 2027, the consequences will be dire. So, whoever is involved in uh, setting up um, uh, the select panel, let us have all the stakeholders on the table. Mm. Let nobody have an upper hand. Let us have religious groups, Mm. Let us have professional groups. Mm. Let us have NGOs. Let us have all key stakeholders on that table. Mm. An attempt to create an IBC that you control from a corner mm. will flop. Is this your message then to Kenyans? Because the High Court, the high court has already directed the immediate yes. replacement. Yes, and uh, we because we are facing a crisis. Because see now... Even, um, um, uh, I'm sure there are uh, constituencies which are operating without a member of parliament. Yes. There are several. There's one there are wards. In coast where yeah. a member of parliament died. There are wards. Mm. Um, uh, touch wood. Touch wood. Mm. Touch wood. Touch wood. Something happens to the president. Touch wood. And then it also happens to the deputy president. Touch wood. Mm. What happens? Because the constitution says, I think the Speaker of the National Assembly will act for 90 days. Yeah. Will we have constituted uh, an, an IBC within that period? Mm. We'll be mourning. I'm not saying that anything is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Just so, for the record. <laughs> you know, let, let the guys, <laughs> let the guys, let the guys be easy. Yeah. You know? I'm not saying, but I'm saying it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because they're just human beings. It's possible. Anything can happen. Yeah. Maybe some of them are sick. Mm. Then you hear, oh, you know, but we saw him here yesterday. What happened? Mm. No. Things can happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, you, we, my friend Saitoti. You yeah. know, Saitoti, uh, Jaden, let me just um, di uh, deviate a little bit. Eh? Yeah. My I was with Moshimia Saitoti the weekend before in Rai, the Sunday before. And we toured dry. And that time I was still at City Hall. And he, he wanted me to run as his candidate for governor in Nairobi. Mm. Under PNU. Yeah. Together with minor commander, together with the councillor Kifua, Kifue, we, we were there. Mm. Exactly six days later, my friend George Saitoti dies in an in a, in a aircraft. Mm. So, you know, this is life. Uh, some some of those deaths are designed. Some of them are. Mm. The creator says it's your time. Yeah. Uh, maybe you've had uh, uh, too much enjoyment, and uh, you know you are recalled yeah. uh, to go to the land of uh, honey and uh, and milk. What does this mean, the High Court ruling? When you look at dialogue committee, uh, and 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 in terms of working with the judiciary, because we had BBI, there was talks. We had, we convened public participation, and then we go back to the courts and they say no go and draft. We have this national dialogue, dialogue costing the Kenyans a lot of money. People go meet for weeks and then we go to the courts and they say no. Should we be now, should we start involving the judiciary when it comes to dialogue? You know, um, the judiciary is an arm of government and they, in my view, back, back office there's nothing wrong in cons consulting them. That this is these are intentions. Mm. 
Mm. I'm, I'm saying back office. Mm. Because, you know, they cannot seem to interfere. Because mm. when you disagree, you have to go back to them. Yes. Okay? But my challenge is, we have an attorney general. Oh, yeah. Justin Muturi and his team. We have top brains, legal brains in this country. Okay? You want to tell me all those people never saw these gaps? Mm. They didn't see the gaps? Because the judge has made a ruling based on law. Mm. So we live in a very strange country where people are, are fail to perform, the age is not doing his work, mm. or rather maybe he's not allowed to do his work. If I were him and I'm not being allowed to do my job, I will resign. Mm. That is what serious people do. But when you hang on to an office, mm. Muturi has been a speaker for, I know for, for some time he was not, you know, I mean, he was out. But then, you know, God favored him. Yeah. Uh, I voted for him with the position of speaker for 10 years. Mm. Do you still need uh, to work? No. So you can go home and take care of your grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if this man, uh, Justin uh, Nani, um, Muturi. Muturi has failed to advise and that's why the government is losing all the cases. Mm. There's a problem at the, uh, at the AG's office. Housing, uh, living, everything. They lose everything. Haiti, they're losing. Mm. Totally losing. They lose everything. How can people earn salaries for not doing work? So there's a this problem. Is a, I mean, this is a height of incompetence. So we have dialogue yes. without brains. So I mean, to answer your question, back office, you can consult the judiciary and say, okay, because they're Kenyans, mm. I'm sure they'll advise you and say, okay, I mean, you know, like even through their judgments, mm. their judgments, if you look at their judgments, they're saying, you know, they are not calling you idiots. <laughs> you know, they're they they a bit diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're not saying, you know, they're, in, you know, they're politely telling you you're stupid, yeah. but in a polite way. But then they give you a solution, say, okay, if you do it this way, eh, you will not have offended the law. You don't have offended the offended the constitution. Okay. So um, that is possible, but I squarely would blame the attorney general's office. Mm. We have had ages before, and I want to mention somebody like Amos Wako Emeritus AG. Mm. He went through very difficult times, but he was able to nav navigate mm. because as an AG, of course, you are uh, the principal advisor to Gamin in terms of uh, matters law. Mm. But you have the other party. You listen to them. Mm. You know, get their concerns. You know, brief the executive. Mm. Then you come to a midpoint. Mm. But when, as an AG, you want to serve one side of the divide, you are born to fail. I, I suspect Amos Wako succeeded mm. because he was able to navigate. to navigate and widely consult, consulting even the opposition. Mm when there were delicate issues, getting their views, you know, and then, you know, and then you get to a midpoint. All right. How come we never had crisis during Amos Wako's time? Mm. I, you know, sometimes I, 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 I normally, I don't I think God gave people from Western Kenya a lot of brains. <laughs> <laughs> you have they always seem to be uh, having, to, you know, you they have to that no, side. I mean, no, uh, because you are from that side. Uh, no, <laughs> but I think God just, uh, yeah. you know, I think God knew that, you know, yeah. if you want to, someone to do a good job, pick from this particular area yeah. on a light note. Let <laughs> <laughs> us go to the judiciary now. Uh, Chief Justice Bada Kobe is under fire. Petition has been filed. Uh, to, the to the Judicial Service Commission seeking her removal. The petitioner Michael Kojo Otieno claims that the Chief Justice failed to follow the law in appointing members of the Tax Appeal Tribunal. Many are reading uh, politics in this case here. Some say, look, this Tax Tribunal, CJ Martha Kome, these cases have been there before they end. From where you sit, is this political because of blows on Ruto's <laughs> agenda as we talked about yesterday? I... Jalil, I can tell you that one, <laughs> we have <laughs> guns for hire in yeah. Kenya. <laughs> and there are many. Yeah. There are guys who are just ready <laughs> to take brief, stall, create chaos, mm. you know, and create confusion. But everybody has a right. If you are offended, you can 
proceed to court. Mm -hmm. Although Ruto called these courts uh, corrupt, but we have no other courts, so we go to the courts. Yeah. So um, I don't blame anybody for uh, uh, filing a petition. It's, you're within your constitutional right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so let's not feel offended. Yeah. But as whether that thing has merit, I don't know. Okay. Okay. But I suspect the executive has now come to the realization that they cannot bend the judiciary. Mm. That they cannot go to bed with the judiciary. They have discovered. They gave them a few goodies, you know. Yeah. They even attempted to, you know, to squeeze them and then they got into a room. They gave them more goodies. Mm. But the guys come out and say, oh no, that's okay, that's fine. But we shall abide by the constitution. Mm. There is no other document that shall look at. And I, I think Martha Comer has been very bold. And he has told the president right on his face that you are not going to squeeze Kenyans. You are not going to offend the constitution under my watch. Mm. So I would encourage Martha Kome to remain firm, to operate within the confines of the law. Mm. Because she saw by the constitution. Let her not be deterred. Let her not be scared of anything. If any, in any case, I would just remind the executive that they are nothing. Kenyans have, they are Kenyans who have put them in that office. If they try, um, uh, you, you know, to disorganize one arm of government, I and many other people mm -hmm. shall rally other Kenyans to disorganize the executive. You're ready to do that? We are ready to do that. We'll disorganize them. Mm. And we have capacity to disorganize the, the, the executive. Mm. There are just a few couple fellows. Uh, now they have sent a thousand to Haiti. Yeah, to Haiti. And uh, you know, God bless them. But anyway, so um, you see this political move because, you know, uh, uh, this administration has, has received two strong uppercuts last week. Is it this week? This week? L no, last week. Last week. Last week. Two good uppercuts. Uh, uh, <laughs> One on housing. Okay. And you know those characters, it's about what they're making, <laughs> the commissions and what have you, yes. the billions of shillings people are making from this housing thing. Mm. So they're furious. See, this ma woman cannot even cooperate. Mm. They forget to understand that Martha Gomez is a president. Mm. She's not a dictator like other people. That the judges are independent. Mm. And they make sound decisions based on law. Okay. Then, you know, the, this uh, Haiti thing comes again, they receive another blow. Mm. And many, other, in fact, there are more blows coming. In fact, they should content with the judiciary. Mm. In fact, let them work harmoniously with other arms of government. Mm. Because if it falls out of that circle, the next blow they'll be receiving mm. is from the masses. And they will not withstand that blow. Okay. It will be so heavy. It will be so heavy it will send several people to Sugoi. <laughs> <laughs> but what can really be done? If you say this is political or you suspect, what can really be done to the CJ because she's the head of the JSC? Of course, you see, uh, somebody has filed a petition, a, a motion, and um, this one I think would be heard by the Speaker of the National Assembly. Mm. So what I suspect, this character is up to some mischief. If you remember the Bana Chunga case of 2003, mm. where he's hounded out of office by some tribunal, mm. I think they're heading that direction. Bana Chunga was the, the C CJ, CJ yeah, during Moi's time. I think they are making that attempt mm. to, to hound uh, CJ come out of office. But I must warn them, it's a dangerous game they're getting into. Mm. They make that attempt. Make that attempt. Final call. Mm. Final call, my, my friend. Yeah. The blow that you're going to get is heavier than Martha Gomez's blow. It's from the masses. <laughs> I think we, it's high time <laughs> we, we wrap up this conversation, a conversation on Friday. If you have any <clears throat> final thoughts, Keith, here, we've talked about double speak, IABC, and CJ Martha Gomez. You're saying the final blow, the final uppercut will be from the masses. When and how can it happen? Oh, my friend. You see, there's history. 
Just look at how other garments have been brought down. And there are many in Africa. You know, last year I predicted that five governments mm. will be brought down. Okay? Yeah. How many came down? Four. So I was shot by one. Yeah. In fact, I predicted in one of my tweets, mm. I said five. I said they probably in East Africa one would, would not escape. Mm. One seems to have escaped. Yeah. I can tell you for <laughs> sure <laughs> the same strategies that apply the other side yeah. will be applied here. Mm. Or can be applied here or anywhere else. Uh, there's nobody indispensable. Mm. And when people get tired of you, when people, the masses get tired of you, it doesn't matter the might you have. Mm. They are mightier than you. One uppercut, you'll find yourself in Sugoi. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. This is Philip Kisi Unscripted, a conversation about the state of politics. <clears throat> we can wrap up what has happened in the country. If you didn't watch yesterday's show, please go ahead and do so. We've talked about doublespeak IEBC, Chief Justice Martha Kome and the Big L. For those who didn't get it yesterday, I hope today you've understood. We have under also talked about Kisia's grandfather, <laughs> who he likes mentioning on several occasions. But until we do talk again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing these conversations. Final word to our viewers, Kama Kawaida. It's a Friday. Let us not lose hope. Because if you lose hope, mm. if you give away hope, you are as good as dead. Let's hang on to hope. Let's keep hope alive. Do you talk again? Have yourself a lovely rest of your day.